What's up, Metal and Heavy Music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and you guys wanted to hear more stories of my own personal metal journey coming up, so today we're going to talk about the bad movie soundtrack that got me into industrial metal music. All right, so setting the stage here, it's 1997-ish. I'm about 11 years old. I don't know anything about this stuff. Okay, this is before my other story about Slipknot, and I'm more into movies here, okay? So I wasn't really allowed to watch a lot of the, like, R-rated and more kind of violent movies, too. I didn't have a game system until pretty late in my childhood. And if I wanted to watch one of the kind of, like, cool movies, I had to go over to one of my friend's houses. And I had two in particular that lived, like, just within really close walking distance of one another. So that's where I saw, like, most of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. We're talking True Lies. We're talking Predator. And then, of course, Aliens has to go along with that, too. So some really great ones, some classics. And then some, like, So Bad It's Good kind of movies, like Face Off, which to this day is still one of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies, and I will rewatch that regularly. So yeah, I'd go over there. That's where I saw The Matrix as well. And in this particular case, we, you know, we're all into video games too, obviously, like I said. And so one of the big video game movies was coming out, and that happened to be the sequel to Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. You're alive. Too bad you will die. Famously, one of the worst movies uh, known as, as just being terrible, and it is. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, this, this is a bad movie. But mind you, again, I'm 11 years old, and to me, this is the coolest thing ever, because what have you got? You've got awesome fighting, and then more importantly, behind the fighting, you've got this amazing soundtrack that I ended up buying. And it's in this room somewhere, I was trying to find it as a prop for here because I still have the exact copy that I have and it is beat to shit. But this soundtrack, y'all, is amazing. It is so good because not only did it get me into a lot of like really cool kind of dancey electronic music that's also super aggro, but it got me into industrial metal. Because there aren't that many. They make up maybe like a third of this soundtrack's runtime, but... They're so amazing, and this was what allowed me to start familiarizing myself with certain artists that, again, within context, I'm 11 years old. I'm not sure that I'm ready to hear KMFDM, but here they are with Megalomaniac and me just listening to this soundtrack over and over being like, I need an adult! What is this? This is so, <laughs> like, weird and kind of nihilistic and... The way that he's singing and the, the tones of the music is so different. The way they have the guitar sound and the electronic sounding drums and everything. I just wasn't really familiar with that, but I immediately connected. I don't know what it was, but I, this is why I always have like a soft spot for any all things industrial and industrial metal. Why I talk so passionately about things like Skinny Puppy because they were such a like early on thing for me that just seemed to be like written into my DNA in this weird way. And then you've also got stuff that's not industrial, but uh, I'm not big into remixes usually, but they have Megadeth on here. This was probably my first exposure to Megadeth, and they have a Danny Saber remix of Almost Honest, and it fucking slaps. Like, this is a great version of this song that I was really, again, intrigued by. I would sing along with the, uh, the hook, the chorus. I got really into, like, I read all the lyrics, too, so I was also, like, singing along to all these songs. But the two really big ones on here that have stuck with me to this day and really were sort of, like, the linchpin of all of this were, first of all, Pitch Shifter with Genius. This is still probably one of my favorite songs, like, especially, like, Get Hyped kind of songs. It just totally rips that chorus is just so vile and and the way his like it sounds like his throat is just like shedding layers as he's going Genius. again i'm hearing this at 11 years old in like middle school and being like holy shit what 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 is this and i played it over and over and over again 
And later on in life, like, was kind of like, man, you know what? I need to find more of this. And ended up finding that album, www.pitchshifter.com, which I've mentioned on the channel before and in my industrial metal band tier list, which you should check out if you're into this kind of stuff. And that's one of my favorite industrial metal albums. It is just front to back, a total banger. It's got really fun lyrics too, like really bitter, kind of cynical kind of stuff, but clever as well. Great times. And that allowed me to kind of explore other stuff within that similar realm of the genre. And then the other one that was the the big, big one, of course, is you've got Rammstein with Engel on this thing. So I think that I heard Engel before Du Hast, which is interesting. I may have heard Du Hast on the radio first. I can't particularly remember the order because I do have memories of like walking through various stores and they just had the radio playing and there's Du Hast playing at like Target or whatever. But I remember this one more because this was like such a moment to hear that opening like weird whistling part which uh, made its way into Twin Peaks season three because David Lynch loves Rammstein. And they've become woven into like so many aspects of things that I love, speaking of which, because big David Lynch fan. And then, of course, I'm just a huge Rammstein fan. I have a Rammstein tier list, too, if you want to check out my thoughts on all of their different albums and how I rank them. And just exploring this weird, crazy German band that, you know, sets fire on the stage and wears weird bondage outfits. Like, I'm, I'm being exposed to this initially at 11 years old and not knowing what to do with it. It wasn't until later that I even found out like all those details, but I just knew this song and I would whistle it. I would sing along to it. I would bang my head to that awesome guitar groove that they have in it. And it was, it was just thrilling. It was just like this really cool time. So honestly, even though Slipknot was the album that made me a metalhead, as I said, that made me like fully dive in and start buying albums and really seek this stuff out. I think that this was one of my earliest formative experiences in starting to really build an interest for it, starting to really build a taste for it that would it's like it planted a seed that would later sprout into <laughs> this d demented metal flower that you see before you now. More, 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 more! There isn't any more! But yeah, if you haven't listened to this soundtrack, I highly recommend it. So yeah, now it's your turn. Let me know down in the comments, what are some weird, obscure things like soundtracks that started you down the road to getting interested in metal music to begin with? And don't go anywhere, because I got plenty of videos coming right after this one. I'm working on more of these story times, because people seem to enjoy them, but I also have full album reviews of new releases, tier list, interviews with bands on the podcast, you name it, we've got it, so plenty of reasons to subscribe, if you've not already. You can also chat with me and several other metal YouTube content creators on the Discord, and support on Patreon, but that'll do it for now. Vladivicarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.